wind loads application to structures. A step-by-step -step manual calculation of wind loads and its applications. Applicable codes, NSCP 2015 and ASCE 7-10. A learning module by Structural Design Spreadsheets. A typical steel structure is composed of main frames and cladding components. Purlins and sheetings can be classified as components and claddings. Other examples of components and claddings are roof coverings and wall coverings. Components receive wind loads either directly or from the cladding, and then transfer the loads to the main wind force resisting system. MWFRS. Fasteners and purlins are examples of components. On the other hand, main frames, portal frames, and other truss like structure are classified as part of the MWFRS. MWFRS pertains to a structural frame or an assemblage of structural elements, working together to transfer wind loads acting on the entire structure to the ground. The system typically receives wind loading from one or more surface. Which procedure to use for design? For the design of main wind force resisting systems, four methods can be used as provided in the code. One of these methods is the directional procedure for buildings of all heights, which is under section 207B of NSCP. Envelope procedure for low-rise buildings, section 207C. Directional procedures for buildings appurtenances and other structures, section 207D and the wind tunnel procedure for all buildings and other structures, under section 207F. For components and claddings, two methods are provided in the code. The analytical procedure for buildings and building appurtenances, under section 207E. And wind tunnel procedure for all buildings and other structures, section 207F. Since we will be focusing only in the analysis of MWFRS, we will use the directional procedure for buildings of all heights method. Section 207B of the code discusses about directional procedure for enclosed, partially enclosed, and open buildings of all heights. Before we can start our calculation, we need to define at least the basic parameters for MWFRS. These parameters are The basic wind speed Wind directionality factor Exposure category. Topographic factor. Gust effect factor. Enclosure classification. And internal pressure coefficient. We will be discussing more on these basic parameters as we go on the given example. Calculation example. Calculate the design wind loads for the steel warehouse structure located in Virak Katanduanist. The structure is situated in a farmland with scattered obstructions. The structure is enclosed having an occupancy category 4, which is a standard occupancy. Now we define first what is the basic wind velocity in our location. The code provides three wind contour maps. It is divided by categories. The first map is for occupancy categories 3, 4 and 5, second for categories 2, and the third is for categories 1. Occupancies in category 1 are for essential facilities. Category 2 for hazardous facilities. 3 for special occupancy structures. 4 for standard occupancy structures. And category 5 for miscellaneous structures. In our case, since we are under category 4, standard occupancy, we'll use the first map. Wind speeds in this map correspond to approximately a 15% probability of exceedance in 50 years. Mean return interval of about 300 years. The project site is located in the southeastern part of Luzon. Looking closely in the map, we can see the basic wind speed anywhere within the island is about 310 km per hour, or 86.11 meters per second. Now we have basic wind speed. Let's take a note of this value. Next parameter is the wind directionality factor, KD. The value of KD is already given in table 207A.6-1 of the code. The structure is a building structure and we're into MWFRS, therefore the value of KD will be 0.85.
The Exposure Category Given our structure is situated in a farmland with scattered obstructions, the site most likely will fall under surface roughness C. Surface roughness C by definition means an open terrain with scattered obstructions having height generally less than 9 meters. This category includes flat open country and grasslands. Therefore, the best exposure category to describe our site is exposure C. Topographic factor, KZT. The presence of hills, ridges, and escarpments, may cause wind to speed up before reaching a project site. Escarpment is a cliff or steep slope, generally separating two levels or gently sloping areas. Ridge is an elongated crest of hill, characterized by strong relief in two directions. Hill is a land surface characterized by strong relief in any horizontal direction. The code provides detailed calculation on how to calculate the value of KZT considering the topography. In our case, we have a generally flat land and therefore KZT can be taken as equal to 1. The gust effect factor. According to the code, gust effect factor for a rigid building or other structure is permitted to be taken as 0.85. In order to determine whether the structure is rigid or flexible, we have to know first its natural frequency. Flexible structure are usually slender structures having a fundamental natural frequency less than 1 Hz. The code also provides an approximate calculation of natural frequency which is a function of the structure's height. For wind direction normal to ridge, we will use the formula for steel moment resisting frame buildings, since our MWFRS in this direction is a portal frame. The natural frequency can now be taken equal to 22.2 divided by h raised to 0.8. h is the mean roof height of the building, except that eave height shall be used for roof angle less than or equal to 10 degrees. Using simple geometry, we can see that our roof angle is 12.5 degrees. This is greater than 10 degrees so we can use a value of h equal to 8 meters. Substituting this value to the formula, we can get a natural frequency of 4.2 Hz. Since this value is greater than 1, we can consider our structure as rigid. For wind direction parallel to ridge, our lateral force resisting system in this direction will be braced frame. Most likely, the system in this direction is stiffer than the other. Using the formula 75 over H, we will get a value of 9.4 Hz. Also greater than 1. The building in this direction can also be considered rigid. In either direction, we can use a gust effect factor of 0.85. Enclosure classification. The code provides criteria to classify whether a building is enclosed, partially enclosed, or open building. An open building is a building having each wall at least 80% open. Two condition is needed to comply for the building to be considered as partially enclosed, as stated in the code. In our case, the building is given to be an enclosed building. Internal pressure coefficient, GCPI. The value of GCPI depends on the building enclosure. Using table 207A.11-1, we can get GCPI for enclosed buildings to be plus and minus 0.18. The plus and minus signs signify pressure acting toward and away from the internal surfaces respectively. Two cases shall be considered to determine the critical load requirements since we have two values of GCPI. Now that we have completed the basic parameters, we can now proceed to our manual calculation. The velocity pressure. Velocity pressure, QZ evaluated at height z shall be calculated by the following equation. qz equals 0.613 times kz, kzt, kd, v squared. Where the velocity is in meters per second. We already have all the values of the variables to be used in the equation except for kz. kz is the velocity pressure coefficient provided in section 207b.3.1 of the code. Velocity pressure coefficient at any height z from ground can be calculated using the following formulas. For the values of z greater than or equal to 4.57 meters, 
kz can be taken equal to 2.01 times z over zg raised to 2 over alpha. If z is less than 4.57 meters, then kz is equal to 2.01 times 4.57 over zg raised to 2 over alpha. In which values of alpha and zg are given in table 207a.9-1. Going to that table, our exposure type is C, and we're looking for the values of alpha and ZG. We can easily find alpha equal to 9.5, and ZG equal to 274.32. Let's take a note of these values. Knowing the values of alpha and ZG, we can easily calculate values of KZ at any given elevation Z. Calculated values of KZ are tabulated in the table shown for elevations 0 to 10. We can observe that KZ increases as the elevation increases, but a constant value can be seen for elevations less than 4.57 meters. At mean roof height, using an elevation equal to 8 meters, we get KH equal to 0.955. Now that we have values of KZ, we can now calculate the values of the velocity pressure QZ for elevations 0 to 10 meters. Tabulated values of QZ is shown in the right side of the table. This can easily be calculated using the given formula of QZ. QZ in the table is in Newton per meter square, or Pascals. Take a note of the values of QZ at the eave height, mean roof height, and at the roof apex, since we will be using these values more often. The design wind pressures. Design wind pressures for MWFRS of buildings of all heights shall be determined by the following equations. P equals QGCP minus QI times GCPI. Where Q is taken equal to QZ for windward walls evaluated at height Z above ground, and taken equal to QH for leeward walls, side walls, and roofs evaluated at height H. QI is taken equal to QH for windward walls, side walls, leeward walls, and roofs of enclosed buildings. G is the gust effect factor. CP is the external pressure coefficient and GCPI is the internal pressure coefficient. We have all the variables needed by this equation except for the external pressure coefficient CP. Figure shows the action of external pressures in the building surfaces for wind acting normal to building ridge line. We need to determine the values of CP for each building surface. For walls, the code provides a table for the values of CP. CP for leeward wall is a function of the ratio of building length and width, L over B. L is the horizontal building dimension measured parallel to the wind direction and B is the horizontal building dimension measured normal to the wind direction. We can calculate then, that L over B is equal to 36 over 60, or equals to 0.6. For windward wall, we get CP equals 0.8 for all values of L over B. For leeward wall, since L over B is between 0 to 1, we get CP equals negative 0.5. And for side wall, we get negative 0.7 for all values of L over B. For roofs, we will use the following table for the values of CP. CP for roofs is a function of the ratio of H to L. This ratio is equal to 8 over 36, or 0.22. Now, for wind normal to ridge and having H over L less than 0.25, we can get values of CP in this area. Our roof angle which is 12.53 degrees is in between 10 and 15 degrees. We can isolate this part of the table for linear interpolation between angles 10 and 15 degrees for both windward and leeward roof. For windward roof, we have two values of CP. Let's call this CP1 and CP2. By linear interpolation, we can get the following expression. Solving for CP1, we get negative 0.6. Then for CP2, we get negative 0.09. For leeward roof, by interpolation again, we can get CP equals negative 0.401. Since we have two values of CP in windward roof, these will add another two cases to be considered in the design.